Hello and welcome everyone to uh, another episode of my MTG Arena videos. Today I would like to talk about uh, an event that is still going on. This is the Holiday Popper event where you have to play with common cards in your deck and you can win some uh, pretty nice alternate art, alternate art uh, cards for Lenovar Elves and Fireminds Research. First and foremost, I would like to apologize in advance because one of my uh, neighbors either upstairs or downstairs is moving heavy furniture all day long or they're just having a, a wrestling match at home. So if you hear any weird noises, please, I do apologize for those. It's not intended to be in the video, but I can't really do anything about it. Um, so I would like to talk about a deck that I've been having a pretty successful run with. And this is black and green saprolings. This is basically my, my deck list for it. Uh, it's just a, a random uh, deck from MTG Goldfish, so you can just go into MTG Goldfish, search up for pauper decks, and you can pretty much win with everything there, uh, and you can get the alternate art for uh, Fireman's Research. This deck I've been running with was quite successful. I think I've lost like a one win and two last game, or game series, uh, so I only got a copy of Lenovar Elves for that. Because the reward structure is something like this, that you get the Lenovar Elf for the first four wins, and then you get the, the rare card, which is the Fireman's Research alternate art, for your fifth win. And so far, if we see my collections, I only have one Lenovar Elf. And I got three copies of Fireman's Research, so this means that this deck was able to reach uh, the five win threshold for this card three times, which is a good sign, I think, because it's fairly cheap to to assemble. And this is what I uh, why I would like to recommend this for you. So this deck is fairly straightforward uh, because we are just going wide with saprolings and other tokens and we are just trying to chew down the enemy before they can uh, attack or react to us, while we have some cheap removal spells like uh, Severed Strands or Vicious Offering to get rid of the enemy creatures, especially uh, the tiny white weenie decks or the Boros Agro decks. This is this is really effective against those. And of course against the, the red decks, which are quite popular. So let's get into the deck list. Uh, we are running four copies of Fungal Infections. This is a, a really nice guys card because you get a, a separate link for it and oftentimes you can trick your enemy into attacking you with a, uh, something like a 2-2 and you cast Fungal Infection on them before assigning blockers. They get minus one, minus one. So they have one toughness, then your token gets created and then you block the one toughness uh, creature with the token and they just lost the creature and you got um, basically value out of this card immediately. We are running four copies of Lenoir Elves for some mana fixing and mana ramping. Four copies of Doom Dissenter, which is uh, just a 1-1 for two mana, but if he dies, uh, we get a 2-2 zombie creature, which is another token that we can use. So you get value out of this card uh, even when he's attacking, because most people are just reluctant to block it. Uh, they do just don't want to give you a 2-2 zombie token. So you can get away with some free attacks at, in the early game and get uh, a token once he dies. We are running two copies of Severed Strands for a cheap sorcery speed removal. Being sorcery speed isn't necessarily good, but it's really good against creatures when uh, they only have like one giant creature on their board and then um, you want to get rid of that. We are running three copies of Wishes Offering. Vicious Suffering is good because you can get away with uh, just uh, casting it instantly on some smaller creatures or make them weaker so, you, uh, so your other creatures can uh, finish them off while uh, he's blocking them. Uh, or you can cast it in the late game, sacrificing your separling and giving minus five, minus five so some, to, to some larger creatures, of, uh, of course. We are running four copies of uh, separling migration. This is just for generating separlings, basically. Don't be afraid to use the unkicked version. It's totally fine, even in the late game, if you are just creating two separate links because they can chum block. Mm, in Popper, as far as I've seen, there aren't that many trample decks. 
so you are just getting away with with uh, charm blocking we are running four copies of death bloom talid uh, this is a nice value card for three mana it hits hard it can block a couple good attacks and then you get a sap rolling once he dies we got four copies of yavimaya suffered uh, or sap herd i should say uh, this is just three mana for basically two uh, creatures two eviscerates for uh, getting rid of those bigger creatures that you can get rid of with wishes offering or severed strands or when you don't uh, have these cards in your hand then we have four copies of thalid omnivore mm, pretty good card um, i don't know if it will be the case but most often than not i'm running pretty long games and thalid omnivore just helps me uh, win those games basically so this is one of your uh, win conditions. We are running three copies of Siege Worms. Most often than not, these are just immediately get destroyed or you get luminous bonds on them. Um, you won't be able to attack much with them, but the good news is that they are big, uh, big creatures with trample, so it's good against uh, red decks because they can't really block all the damage that it can do and you can kill most of their rats if they are trying to, to block it with too many. And for other decks, most people are just too focused on the Siege Worm to get notice that uh, most of your other creatures are getting in for the kill. And for mana, we are just running with 10 Swamps, 8 Forests, and 4 Golgari Guild Gates. So this is the deck. It definitely is capable of uh, giving you the 5 wins for the Fireman's Research. Um, and the reason I, I recommend this deck is because it's fairly cheap to do or make. Most of your cards will be coming from the uh, starter decks that you've received uh, once you started playing, mostly from the Sapperling Migration uh, deck. So the Land of Our Elves, you get all four copies. I think two copies come from the Forest Smite and three from the Primal Fury uh, decks. For Doom Dissenter, you get uh, three copies each in either Separating Swarm, Graveyard Bash, or Chaos and Mayhem decks. Then the Death Bloom Talid, you get three copies each in Separating Swarm and Graveyard Bash. Then we have the Yavimaya Sap Herd, uh, where you get three copies in the Separating Swarm deck. Um, then we have Talid Omnivore, where you get two copies in Separating Swarm. You don't get any Siege Worms in the decks, unfortunately. Uh, for Sorceries, we have the Sapperling Migration, where you get three copies in the Sapperling Swarm starter deck. Uh, for instance, we have Fungal Infection, where you get also three copies uh, in the Sapperling Swarm deck. Then we have three Vicious Offerings, where you get all three copies in the Sapperling Swarm mm, deck. Then you get two severed strands, you, oh, sorry, you won't get two severed strands. Uh, these you have to pay for uh, white cards. And we have two eviscerates, which you also don't get from anywhere else. And the four guild gates that you can get from any of the starter decks. So if you count those up, you can make like 75% of this deck just from the starter decks. And you have to spend a total of 16 common white cards just to get those one or two extra copies of those cards or to get the three copies of the Siege Worm, uh, two copies of the Severed Strands and two Eviscerates. And most of the others are just plus cards for the for the rest of the deck. Uh, okay, so that's basically my deck. And let's just jump into your game and see how the deck does. But unfortunately, whenever I try to record these sessions, I got pretty uh, unlucky, so don't don't be um, discouraged to to try this try this deck out, please. The event is free, so you can enter uh, how many times you want. And let's see who we are facing against. Okay, so we get three swamps, a Doom Descenter for early game play, a Severed Strands, Thalid and Siege Worm for late game. I think we are pretty good here, especially if we if we draw some cards because we are on the draw. So I'm just going to keep this.
most of my losses uh, came usually from uh, picking at the hand with, uh, with some mana problems. So here we get the Doom Dissenter down, if he attacks we can just block it and get a 2-2 token. Or we can just let him deal 2 damage to us. Okay, so we can damage him now. But it's also good because we can use Sever Strands on that. Since I don't have any action, I'm not afraid to use several strands here, killing the one with the enchantment. <clears throat> this obviously sets us back with casting the siege run, but it's not a problem. Okay, so they got a wall of mist. This is a pretty unique tag that I haven't seen before. Unfortunately, we didn't drew, didn't draw any lands, so we just kind of had to skip the turn here. We are still missing uh, green mana for the Abimaya Sapherd and the Siege Run. We didn't have land nowhere else or forest in our hands, which is not the best. Okay, so this is more of like an enchantment deck pretty interesting. I'm not going to block here, just because if we don't draw any more creatures we might just sack the token. Yeah, I think... I think what I want to do is just cast Fungal Infection on it, doesn't really matter. We get the token which we can sac for this. So we got a bit more value out of this. Maybe they have a dive down in their hand that they could have used, which would have been fine by me, I, I guess, because we still got the eviscerate. Okay, so we have our own elves, but we don't draw any mana, so... This is just a, a classic example of your average MTG Arena uh, gameplay. Opponent is at 6 mana, we are down at 3, and all our swamps, so... We can't do really much here. Fortunately for us, they don't have any more creatures. Okay, so now we got our... Uh, our green mana. And here I kind of just want to go Lanovar Elves and pass the turn because they don't have any uh, threatening creatures here. Opponent just stopped the time, I don't know why. <clears throat> I apologize if I'm, if I'm coughing too much, but it looks like I've got the cold. Okay, so they got a Gearsmith Guardian. Pretty good card against us. Fortunately for us, we can cast Eviscerate on it. Hmm, how do I want to approach this? We can't really cast the Siege Ram yet, so we might as well just use our Eviscerate on it. I could attack with both of these creatures and probably one of them would get through, but just in case he blocks my Lanovar Elves with their Lanovar Elves, I don't want to sacrifice it because we have our own mana problems. So we unfortunately need this uh, fifth mana that our Elves uh, provide for us. There are two cards. <clears throat> I think my next action would be to cast Talid Omnivore because we have just three copies of it. <clears throat> okay, so we got a, our own mana. So now, just in case they run any counter spells, which I really doubt, I want to throw this out there. <clears throat> ok, 
Okay, so that was successful. Let's just pass the turn. Okay, so they, they returned that. So this was the instant that they that they had uh, in their hand all along. Which is good. I'm totally fine with that. You just have to remember which one uh, you got back into your hand because that is what it's revealed for them. So now we have to cast it again. Opponent is still holding something of an interaction here. We can pass the turn. With no attacks. And I think I will mark their end step just because I can use Fungal Infection on their Lanaware Elves, which would get rid of a blocker. Yeah, I think that's fine. <clears throat> they might have a Dive Down. Or is Dive Down a common card even? Okay, so it's Pack's favor. We can't really do much about it. Just let him live. We get the sapling anyway. Um, we got our mana again, and let's see how many we need for the Siege Worm. So we got 6 mana there, we could tap the Lanowar Elf and still sack the, the Sapraling. Yeah, I think we're good like that. Probably. Opponent doesn't have an interaction in their hand, so let's just go to combat. So we would like to attack with these creatures. Opponent can block the zombie token with the wall of mist and then Thalit kills the Lanovar elves. Or he can just let them through, it doesn't really matter. It's a good play from the opponent. And now we can just cast the Siege Worm. And let's just end our turn. <clears throat> okay, so it's a bristling boar. Our Siege Worm and Talit can still kill the boar, they don't have any cards in their hand. Wall of Mist can be a problem, they won't block with the Lanovar Elves. And at the end of turn we might just cast Yavimaya Sephard, so we get the two creatures, one of them which is a token and we can sacrifice. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we got another elf, but let's attack, attack first. Mm, no, we would like to attack with these ones. And I think the token as well. Because then we can sack it. For some extra damage if they don't block the Thalid. Yeah, this should be good. Okay, so before the damage phase, we can just sack the token, growth it to 5, and just the other damage. Um, so we are just casting another copy of Lanowar Elves and Yavimaya Sapphire. 
to go even wider. If they don't draw any uh, interaction with our creatures, yep, that's happened. So, what you just saw, this this deck is capable of grinding itself out of many sticky situations. Uh, we didn't have our mana for like uh, turn 6, probably. And we still managed to get a, a win. Of course, you need some luck for it as well, because the opponent didn't have many creatures at the beginning, so he just had two uh, elves with Vigilance. And he tried to enchant those creatures, but we managed to get rid of those, because we had our removal spells, which are all uh, related to black mana, so we, we kind of were lucky there. I really like this hand, but it worries me that we only have two lands in hand, but fortunately for us, we are on the draw, so... We might as well just keep it. Worst case scenario, we get two Sepralings on turn two. Okay, so this looks much better now. <clears throat> okay, so if he dies, uh, he gets uh, to create a token. I'm kind of okay with just um, playing a forest here and Sepraling migration because he gets less information about what we have, so he doesn't really know that we are in a black and green deck. He can attack, we can block it. Doesn't really matter, he gets a token and he can probably summon something else. Or he can just pump the Martyr of Dusk. You can see they got their uh, Vampire token with Lifelink. And another Lifelink creature. It's our turn to play the, the Swamp here, and I think we can just go Deathbloom Thalid here. We won't be attacking with the Sepraling as they can gain some life from that. Hopefully we draw some mana here. Hmm... The worst they can have is a pump spell. So if we just block with the Sapperling, it will probably die because they pump the, the vampire token here. So I'm going to block with that Loom Talib. If he dies, we get a creature back, so it doesn't really matter. Yep. Just what we expected. Um, we can probably get away with just playing this, because then... Well... We have two options. We can just attack, and once he blocks, we can just minus him take him down with the Sapperling or and, and get getting one damage or we can just kill him with the Sever Strength and getting one damage. Okay, hello. So I think we we attack here. Because even if he doesn't block the creatures, we could have still used their sacrifice. Just minus two, minus two, so he won't deal damage to us. He's holding another pump spell, probably. Okay, nice play. But we still have our Lanawai Elves here. I'm quite happy that we got this uh, pump spell out of his hand, I didn't really... I uh, think that he had two in his hand. They won't be blocking this. And another one with lifelink. We can have... Thalid here. For a blocker. He'll probably have luminous bonds for it. <coughs> Okay, so now he can tap our creature, which wouldn't be good. So here I kind of like just playing 
severed strands on the unicorn, sacking the saproling. and attacking with Talib. He can't really do much about it other than block it. We got to play another uh, Lenovar Elves. We won't be blocking the Daybreak Chaplain. So he gets uh, 2 life again. He'll be at 25, we'll be at 20. No blockers, and let's see what he summons for us. <clears throat> okay, so it's a flying creature. Pretty good for them, as it gets evasive. But I think here we still need to play this. Just for some pressure. Because even if he deals us uh, a ton of damage, we can just get back in with the Siege Worm. The Aura is a nice addition. Probably will draw some removal. Okay, two Auras. That's, that's even better. So our two turn clock is ticking here, pretty much. We have to attack with you, I guess. Yes, we have to. No blockers means we get to play another Siege Worm. Unfortunately, if we don't draw any removal spells next turn, we are dead on board. Okay, so Take Vengeance was one of his cards. Still good for us. Okay, so yeah, this was the game for us. Which is quite unfortunate, because it could have gotten way better than this. Let's just give him the, the satisfaction of beating us. So we got our first loss, thanks to the double enchantment on the Pegasus. Let's jump into the other game. Um, hopefully we can we can get something more, uh, I don't know, beatable. It's funny how we didn't draw that many removal spells because we have quite a couple of them in the deck. Okay, I like this hand. Even on the draw it's good. Obviously, starting with a tap land once you're on the uh, draw can't really help you, but we don't have any creatures with one drop and we don't have our uh, Sapralink Swarm. So yeah, just start with the Gilgate. <clears throat> if they have a creature, I'm tempted to just use the Doom Decenter, but it's a Daybreak Chaplain, which is quite okay, so I'm just using the other Guildgate and passing the turn. As we can get much more value in turn 3. It's a weird, weird take on the, the Boros deck. I think we are just playing the Sapphire here because we can block both of their creatures with them if they don't use a shock or any sort of removal spell. Instead, it's a Starcrown Stag, which is okay. 
If he attacks with the chaplain, I'm tempted to double block it. He can't really kill both of our creatures. So he'll go for the, the suffering, which is fine. Mm, just for the sake of uh, having something on board, I think I'll go with Talid, because he will tap Talid, then we can block with the Sapphire. Or just let the, the 3 damage through, it doesn't really matter. Because next turn we can use uh, Vicious Offering or Sapphire Migration. Okay, so Thalid will be tapped, I don't really mind that. Actually, I won't be blocking here, 3 damage is not the end of the world. Let's see what our opponent has. It would be good to just draw a land, an untapped land. Okay, so now they can give flying to their creature. Which is quite a problem. Ah, yeah. So we we might have to sack Thalid here, but first we can first we can attack with them. I think. If he blocks Thalid with the Pyromancer, that's totally fine by us. <laughs> I don't know why he double blocked it like this. Yeah, sure. Just kill one of those. Okay, so he gets plus two, plus two. Interesting choice. But then, then again, this is easily our better option. We can just give minus three, minus three to the stag, stag the separating or the separate, I should say. And then they've lost the creature and the spell, plus three life. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we couldn't uh, cast anything else because we are still stuck at three mana while our opponent has uh, five. Okay, so a creature with double strike, we might have to get rid of that really, really soon. Or the opponent is just going to grind us down. Now we have our swamp. We could cast separating migration here. For two, and the doom this center. The problem is that they will uh, boost the sergeant with the Pegasus Corsair, so we are looking at it's 2 damage right out of the gate. That's 6 and 7, so we are down at 2 this turn, which isn't the best. Oh no, we are actually at 5, they can't really count. Ah, so yeah, we are pretty dead here, which is unfortunate for us. Can I cast it? Yeah, let's just go with the worm.
get in with padded. <clears throat> but yeah, we are dead, so it didn't really matter what we did. We can deal with flying creatures, that's our problem, so it should have been a better choice just to minus 3, minus 3, or minus 5, minus 5 down the Pegasus Corsair. That's a lesson for future me, I guess. So, yep, yeah, good game. Oh, maybe I maybe I just misunderstood this this card because they don't have a gate. Okay, so my bad, but either way, it's totally fine because we just lost. Maybe if we've played Thalid first, I mean Thalid Omnivore first, and sacked a bunch of creatures for plus two plus two, we might have gotten their life total down, but it's highly unlikely. Yep, that's the game. So just like I said, um, <laughs> when I try to present the deck, it, it always goes like that, uh, goes down like this. So we got our one win, two loss situation here. So we still gotta run nowhere else, which is good. And I think I'll try to get another series down with the same deck just later today. So thank you for watching, and uh, please feel free to try this deck out. I'm going to show you the exact list of cards here. The only thing that you can see at the bottom is the four copies of Golgari Guild Gates. So yeah, try this, uh, try this out and um, believe me, you will get more often than not a five win streak with it. And I'll probably upload one still today where I can prove it, hopefully. <laughs> but right now we are at uh, two copies of Lanoar Elves with the alternate art and and three copies of Fireman's Research which is kind of a niche card but yeah so thank you very much for uh, sticking uh, around and watching this video and I wish you all a nice day